Hello engineers, welcome to Engineer Brandon Schools. Today we are going to find the poles and zeros of a transfer function and we are going to plot it on MATLAB. So for instance, let us have the transfer function g, j of s equals this. So we can find the poles and the zeros of this transfer function. So to do that, I first need to define the transfer function j. So you remember from the previous video, there were three ways of defining a transfer function. If you like to learn, you can simply move backwards to the previous video. But in this video, I'm going to define the transfer function using one method only, which is the TF method. So remember that the TF method, I have coefficients of the various terms in the numerator and denominator so for the first square bracket coefficients of the various terms in the numerator so coefficient of s 1 and constant term 1 then I move to the second square bracket coefficient of terms in the denominator so I have coefficient of s cube 1 Coefficient of s square 9. Coefficient of s is 26. Constant term is 24. So if I hit my enter button, I'm going to see the transfer function j. So you notice that j is the same as j here. And we also notice that j has been stored in the workspace. So, to find the poles of J, I'm simply going to type in the command pole of J. Then if I hit my enter button, I'm going to notice that the poles of J are negative 4, negative 3 and negative 2. So, remember that poles are gotten from the values, that is, if you equate the denominator to 0, the different values of s for which the denominator equals 0 is satisfied. Then for the zeros, zeros this with the numerator. While looking at this transfer function, I already know that the 0 is negative 1. So to prove that, I'm simply going to type in the command 0 of j. So I notice that my 0 is negative 1. So that is how you can find, you can easily find the poles and zeros of a transfer function. Then let us move to the plotting of the poles and zeros of the transfer function in an argon diagram. So to plot the poles and zeros of a transfer function, you use the command pz map so it means you should map the poles and zeros of the transfer function j so if i hit my enter button so we notice that a pop-up has come out that is a graph showing the poles and zeros of the transfer function so poles are represented with x, while zeros are represented with 0. So we notice that here our poles were at negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. So we have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. And our zeros are at negative 1. So here is a 0 at negative 1. So Orderly, we can also put our grid on by typing in the command grid on. If we hit the enter button, we are going to see that a grid is going to appear on the pole zero map, which will make easy understanding of the map. So let us move to another example. So I'm going to give you some time to pause the video 
and define this transform function you get the poles and zeros of this transform function then you plot it on a pole zero map with the grid on so your time is up so i'm going let's let's do it together so let me clear my command window so i'm going to define this transfer function h of s so i'm going to say h equals tf of square bracket so coefficients at the numerator have one negative six and zero for the constant term so i'll have one negative six zero then for the denominator coefficients are one for s cube zero for s square six for s and 100 for the constant term so i have one for s cube zero for s square six for s and 100 for the constant term so if i hit my enter button i'm going to notice that the transfer function is exactly the same then I'm also going to see that the transfer function has been stored in the workspace. So to get the pole of this transfer function, I'm simply going to type in the command pole of h. So if I hit my enter, it's going to give the poles of this transfer function. So we notice that the poles are complex numbers. That is, they have a real part and an imaginary part all of the poles then for the zeros of this transfer function i'll type in the command zero of h so the zeros i notice that zeros are at zero and six then to plot this transfer function i'm simply going to type in the command pz map of h okay so here is it so here we have our poles so we have a pole here we have a pole here and we have another pole here so let me zoom it so we have a pole here we have a pole here and we equally have another pole here we have two zeros one here and one here so while looking at it we have a pole at 2.1 plus 4.39 i so the horizontal axis is a real axis while the vertical axis is a imaginary axis so let me on my grid So the grid is on for easy calculation. So this is how you can find the poles and zeros of a transfer function using MATLAB. So please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel and we'll continue doing more interesting videos. Thank you.